Does the city of Liverpool still mean something to you? Yeah, this is where I was um, born. And the city of Liverpool uh, actually means nothing without the people. And it's the people that make Liverpool City. I mean, does something go bong in your heart when you get back to Liverpool? Yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, it does. I mean, at the risk of sounding naive, is this the kind of city that you would take your humour from? I mean, yours, what I meant earlier on, by saying yours is not a, a talent that comes naturally to most people, is you've got a very unique and a special sort of humour. Does that come out of the city? Uh, this, this again, uh, it is um, from the from the people that, that come from Liverpool. I mean, every, everybody's a comedian in Liverpool, and there's no other people on this planet like them. It's terrific. I mean, you mean that? Well, yeah, I was in Barbados, right? Mm. And I, I thought, well, the sun's out, you know, because it, it, it does shine there, you see. <laughs> and there was palm trees blowing in the breeze, you know, really blowing in the breeze. <laughs> I was really good. <laughs> and I was walking down the beach, and I thought, well, no one will recognise me, you see. And I was just mm. having a jog along the beach. And next thing I heard, all right, Fred. <laughs> Do you want a bevy? You know, and there's all these ghosts, and, we all, and we all, we, you know, we all got together and we had a drink and a chat, you know, about the old times and things, and it was terrific, you know. And I've you... met them in a, they're all over the world. Yes. Yeah. Scouts have a habit of doing that, I think. Yeah. Do you find it a problem being recognised virtually wherever you go, even Barbados? No, no, no. I, you know what normally happens is, is you walk into a shop and you get a load. Full of parcels or boots or and and you up to here and you've been in the shop for an hour and as you're going out someone says uh, can I have your autograph <laughs> <laughs> and you go yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's, it, it, it's that thing that sort of yes. uh, gets you down a bit you know yeah if they come up to you and say can I have your autograph sort of when you walk into a place it, it, it's great or if if you go to boxing matches you know it's very into boxing, you see, mm. and you go there. You you can't watch the fights because there's all these programs coming over. There's an <laughs> autograph, and I'm bobbing and weaving, trying to see the. And I actually missed the Alan Minter fight. I went to see Alan Minter against Hagler, mm. and I missed I missed the, the whole of the fight through signing autographs. <laughs> you know, and I paid the a ringside seat. You know, I was sitting there, thought, oh God, I've missed it. You know. Do you find? I mean, you you've been working at your act and at what you do for an awful long time. Do you find that you're beginning to do the same things over and over again, or do you find that you can, in fact, progress and come up with a different sort of humour all the time? Uh, well, uh, uh, going back to America, uh, there's a guy there called uh, Don Rickles, and uh, he's been doing the same act now for 25 years, and he's changed about two jokes in 25 years. Mm. So when you've got a format, you keep it. You might put an occasional gag in or work mm. differently now and again, you know? Mm. But, but once you've got a format, stick to it. You know, don't spoil it. Is there ever any danger of your saying, right, that's it, I've had enough, I'm going back to do something completely different? Uh, well, I suppose eventually uh, I'll probably um, be in show business but in a different field like management or I might come into a television station and show these producers how to produce the shows. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so, uh, <laughs> we should look forward to your advice. Freddie Starr and Terry Phillips, thank you very much indeed for coming in. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.